Welcome to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW, and of course, the man with me today is the owner, the operator of the Impact Lounge, the main man, BQ. Say what's up to the people. Hey, yo, what's up, everyone? Today and every week, you act like I'm a special guest or something like that. I know I miss an episode um, every once in a while, but you're, you're the most special guest we could ever have. Okay. And even though this is your house, okay, <laughs> you still are so welcoming and inviting that you make us feel like we're the host and you're the guest. Ooh, I like that. I like that. I can dig it. Uh, but, but yeah, everyone welcome uh, to the cool factor. This is the uh, most honest impact wrestling podcast that you're going to find out there. And uh, not a lot of ass kissing going on here. We love this company, and otherwise we wouldn't be doing this. So when we're critical, it's only out of passion for the company. But uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to keep it honest here. And um, if it's good, it's good. We're going to say it's good. If it's bad, we're going to say it's bad. And that's just what you, what you can expect with our podcast. So if you're first time here and that sounds good to you, you know, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. I know that uh, TW is always the one that runs this down, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and knock this out today. Let's give this video – a thumbs up, subscribe your first time here. Uh, feel free to comment. And uh, we are doing a special episode next week that's just going to be a mailbag Q&A episode. We're under the assumption, I haven't, we haven't seen anything uh, official, but we're under the assumption that next week is probably going to be like a turkey suit challenge epi- episode or something silly, uh, which we probably won't watch and definitely won't review. So uh, <laughs> we're going to do a you know strictly mailbag episode. So uh, you can tweet at us dm us uh you can email the impact lounge at gmail.com or you can just uh leave questions here in the comments so we're going to go back a couple videos look at some of the questions and you know just do a mailbag episode so you know feel free to uh to join the conversation oh yeah and like you mentioned uh you can if, if you got questions you can drop them below uh in the comment section right below this video but you can also reach out to us on on twitter hit us in our DMs or drop me questions in the comments. Uh, if, if you see a tweet about this show or whatever, you know, hit us with the comments, whatever. I, Cause I already got some banking up uh, some questions that are going to get some good responses. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm looking at you, Duke loves wrestling. Okay. Duke <laughs> loves wrestling show. he been, uh, he been trying to come at us a little bit. So I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, answer some of his questions about this here <laughs> impact AEW forbidden door situation. Cause um, listen, I'm saying, I'm saying, you know, I'm listen. It, it's it's nothing personal. It's just that when I'm right, I'm right, and when I'm talking, I'm right. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I touched on this a little bit last week, but um, it seems to be a recurring theme here. The biggest story in wrestling as of right now is that there was yet another round of releases from the overly bloated WWE roster. I guess they're trying to get in shape for the new year and shedding a lot of weight because even though they have made reportedly record profits, they still are subject to budget cuts. And that means uh, a bloodletting of talent Um, seemingly week after week after week. There's another list of names that are, you know, now newly free agents. So because this is an Impact-centric podcast, the thing that all Impact fans want to know when they see this news is who among these releases might show up in Impact, who might be a good fit, who might be a Josh Matthews, Dream match anywhere in the world. <laughs> uh, from these lists of, of, of releases that might be a good fit for Impact Wrestling. So you tell us, BQ, who do you think, um, who have you been hearing any scuttlebutt? Or like, who do you think might be a good fit? Well, first, you know, I want to say, um, you, made a, you, you made a comment, which a lot of people say on social media, WWE makes record profits. But you also said that they're subject to budget cuts just like, everybody else now any successful business i know i mean you can have your opinions about how ww operates i mean they definitely 
can be unethical at times and not give a shit about people. But at the same time, they are not, uh, you, you know, actually who KM, Kevin Matthews had a little rant about this months ago, but I'm putting this in my own words because it's something I feel also. Uh, it is not WWE's duty to employ everybody. Um, they, they don't owe, you know, obviously you want to be ethical, but they don't, just because you have a job within a company, if they don't have anything for you, it's not their job to just keep you employed. Like that's, you know, when they make cuts, they're going to sign people too. Like that, I think that's the part that people don't, don't see. Now they might be signing people at lesser rates and, and everything and paying them less might be developmental people, but you know, the, the budget cuts are done because, you know, they say, Hey, we, we're going to trim off here. We can't use these guys, but we're going to replace them with these guys. Like that, that just the, the, the way business works. But there was a, the, this latest release group. Now I'm not familiar with a few of the names. I saw, um, Isaiah Swerve Scott on there who was, uh, was he something Strickland or uh, something or other? He was killed um, shot in, in uh, Lucha Underground. Yeah, right. Shane Strickland. Underground, but Swerve Scott was what, who he was in WWE. Yeah, yeah, Shane Strickland. So he's um he's excellent. Uh, he he would he would be nice if that was an option. But the three names that were Impact Wrestling related that that are the ones like okay, come home was Johnny Morrison, Johnny Impact, Ty Valkyrie, and Drake Maverick, who was Rockstar Spud. Um, I could see Rockstar Spud returning. I don't see a, a place for him anywhere else. But I don't know how much he fits like what's going on with Impact right now. There's a lot of bad comedy right now. Drake is not actually bad comedy. Like he's for the most part pretty good comedy. But I don't see where he he fits. Um, a lot of his best work was done in the ring with mic work and, and all that. And they, they don't do that so much with that impact right now, but it worked in the old impact zone setting. When you saw rows of people, like now it looks like you're almost talking to nobody, like an empty arena, even though they're clearly not, but it just, I don't think he would be as effective in the current landscape of impact, but I could see him returning. Absolutely. Um, I know he dropped another video on social media. I don't know if he cried this time or not. I don't know. <laughs> So. Yeah, he actually kind of made fun of himself for doing it. It was actually it was it was a good video. It was a good video. I, I saw it. Um, it's worth checking out. I mean, it's like four minutes long, so that's that's a bit of a reach. Ooh. But um, what he did was he started with the video he did before where he cried, cried, and uh, <laughs> and then he he kind of like spliced it as if like he was talking to himself then. And I was expecting EC3 to show up in the video because, you know, he's down with that 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 click, you know what I mean? The yeah. EC3 and Adam Shear and Moose, like, they're all, like, really good friends, apparently. And so uh, I was expecting one of those guys to show up in it. But, I mean, like, it was, it was basically like, pick yourself up. You could still be a professional wrestler. You know what I mean? And I was like, all right, yeah, that's cool. That's fine. Like, I mean, listen, he could go to AEW where he would be a giant. Yeah, <laughs> that he would. Could team up with uh, Darby Allen and some of those other 13 year olds. They'd be the ankle biters. Yeah, there we go. It would definitely <laughs> work. You notice in AEW, the smaller guy wins every match. Like, that's one thing I've, I've noticed. Like, majority of the time, the smaller guy wins. It's pretty ridiculous, in my so opinion. So, I, um, I, there's this, this famous book called Friday Night Lights. And in Friday Night Lights, they talk about, like, I, I know a lot of people probably seen the movie Friday Night Lights, but the movie Friday Night Lights is almost nothing like the book Friday Night Lights. Like, the movie Friday Night Lights is about, like, the, um, the mythical glory of, like, high school football and all this shit, you know what I mean? Like, like the, the book Friday Night Lights is about a town in Texas that is like, you know, overly obsessed with football and is racist as hell. And it has, you know, like, you know, black players and they treat them a certain way. And you know what I mean? Like, just so they can be useful on the, te on the team and that type of stuff. And one of the things they talk about, about um, why they redistrict re the towns a certain way just so they can get like black running backs is to help like uplift this idea of that school like part of their image was like the Wes Welker, right? Like the scrappy white guy. Like it just, 
it just kind of it's it's part of the image that they sell right and like with aew you can tell that's a thing you know what i mean like you can tell that's a thing like you look at like the you know um again like you know the 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 jungle boys and the darby allens and the young bucks like all of these guys who can't see over the top rope but they're beating everybody up i mean like you know it's a thing right they're like hey look (laughs) you know we know that you only grew so much but we bet you're making a lot of money now so look at these guys who you identify with huh we think you identify. i mean i think they're banking on the fact that a lot of people who you know, couldn't really play sports because they only grew so tall. They, right. um, you know, decided to make a lot of money instead and they would support a wrestling company. And it looks <laughs> like the gamble is paying off, okay? So good for them. <laughs> they know what they're doing. But the other two names, well, I guess, well, yeah, two names. Um, I was going to say Taya Valkyrie, but she wasn't in this recent one, was uh, Johnny Morrison. We know him as Johnny Impact. Johnny Elite, maybe. I don't know. I, I just, he... You know, some people are saying Johnny and Taya come back to Impact, and then there's Jackson Ryder, Riker, who was Gunner, correct? Am I talking? Am I thinking of the right guy? Yeah, you're thinking of the right guy. Okay, because I don't know who the hell he was in WWE. I just know they they tried to get him over and they couldn't. Uh, but he's Impact's not going to touch him. Um, I don't think we're going to see Johnny or Taya. I think Taya Taya is the one where everyone's like Taya, come back home to Impact, but she's done. Now, granted, there's a storyline that they could do something her and Deanna Perrazzo that would be amazing. Trust me. But she's done everything she can do in Impact. I mean, when you have the Knockouts title that long, granted, she has, wasn't a Knockouts tag team champion or anything. But uh, when, you, when you have just had that much success and she was in the company for a while, she, she was with the company when Jeff Jarrett was there with the Global Force shit, or at least when it was – transitioning from impact to global force back to impact and, and that general ballpark Ty Ty showed up. She was with a company for a long time. I think she desires to bring her craft in, in front of a larger audience. You yeah. know what I mean? Like she's seem, seemingly done all the smaller promotions. So and she I deserves just, to perform in front of a larger audience. She's right. amazing. Like she's right. really dope. Like every aspect of her character, uh, every aspect of any character that you give her, she knocks out of the park. And I'm not even saying that, like, just to be, I'm not, like, pandering. I'm just saying, that, like, that's just a fact. Do you know what I mean? Like, you look at anything they've given her to do, and she knocks it out of the park. Um, and then, you know, look at her, um, look at, like, her costumes. You know, like, all of that stuff, man. Like, she's just, she's just a dope performer on, in every possible level. Like, her in-ring is thorough, and it looks solid. And, I mean, it, 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 you know, like, she lays her work in. Like, yo, she's dope, man. And I, she deserves to be on a big stage. So I totally respect right. that. that and that, that's what I think is, is going to happen. I think she wants her shot at a big stage. It, it would just – I can't see her just, like, taking a step I, – I know it sounds really negative. Uh, I can't see her taking a step backwards. I just, I just don't. Uh, and I, I don't see Johnny – John, I don't see a place for Johnny in AEW though. That's that's uh, we kind of talked about this before the show. I don't see it. It doesn't work there. I don't see it happening. Does it mean yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. going Johnny to? Is much more yeah. on like the entertainment level, and it's like AEW is like in an interesting place because AEW is they have this thing where it's like we're all in on the joke. You know what I mean? It's like we're gonna do stuff that's corny. It's not really funny. But you get it, right? You know what I mean? There's a yeah, lot yeah, of that, right? That. There's a lot yeah. of that. Like, again, like the Young Bucks, right? Like, they're, like their thing is like, we're going to rip off other people's acts, but you get it, right? We're being yeah. meta, right? It's a thing, you know? And so, uh, it, it, but, you know, to me and to probably a lot of people, it's just corny. But, but to them, they're convinced that their audience gets it. And they're probably right, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know that John Morrison fits into that. You know what I mean? He looks like a real athlete, and that probably puts him on the outside of the AEW roster to begin with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. A <laughs> um, little too many muscles, okay? That might uh, – he might not fit in there so well. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I could totally see him in Impact. But here's what I was going to say, kind of going back to Ty a little bit. It, it just – it, it rings out to me about what impact does with their women's roster. Like, I think I thought they had a chance to have some really 
thorough ass women's matches when they had Kylie Ray, Deanna Perrazzo, Jordan Grace, and Taya Valkyrie. And I'm talking about like just like a gauntlet of these four women just running through the roster and then running into each other in like super clash after super clash. But it just never quite materialized like that. Like Kylie Ray kept beating Taya in like, you know, in, in Russell House matches and um and uh and and Jordan Grace and Deanna Perrazzo, they had some bangers, but it's like again, if it's like you got Kylie Ray and Taya having bangers, and then you got Jordan and Deanna having bangers. You can still get two more sets of bangers out of that. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. it just wasn't – they, they were only, like, presenting the one serious program, and the other was, like, comedy. And so um, I thought they missed an opportunity there. I still think they could do that, right, because they have Mickey James as the champion right now. You still got Deanna Perrazzo. You still got Jordan Grace. I'm just waiting for them to give Tasha Steele a real chance. Uh, I believe M- M- Mercedes Martinez can really go. I'm, I'm uh, interested in seeing her in some big spots. And so Impact books their women's division in much more of like a character-based comedy type deal. But I think they have some good athletes where they can have some good matches. Like, don't be afraid of this shit, man. Like, yeah. th- to me, women's, ra- w- women's wrestling – almost surpassed men's wrestling in WWE because like the top of the women's card in WWE, we're talking about Charlotte, Sasha Banks, uh, you know, Becky Lynch, um, Bailey, you know, now like Bianca Belair, like we're talking about people who can have some banger ass matches, like no matter how you slice it, not fake looking fighting, like good characters, not look at my outfit, I'm showing my breast and my butt, like, no, we're gonna come out here and have some banger ass matches, like, that's wrestling, like, it's not, it's not rocket science, bro, like, people like good wrestling, it doesn't matter who's doing it, okay, and so I think they have, they have, I think they're, 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 they're leaving it on the table, leaving money on the table by not having a more serious women's division, Mm. you know what I'm saying, and to their credit, they kind of are a little bit now. Like, I see – like, I'm interested to see what Mickey and Mercedes Martinez is going to look like. Because um, <clears throat> I think Mickey right now, I think she's in it. Like, you know, this is – she's she's probably on the backside of her career, right? Um, so, I think she just wants to have bangers on the way out. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, like, I'd love to see Taya come back into this knockouts division, and I'd like to have them – really shift the focus of the knockouts division and like, yo, let's, let's get some good wrestling. Let's put some good women's wrestling on the board that we can honestly hold up against any company because they love to thump their chest and be like, Oh, we're the knockouts division. We originated good women's wrestling. And they're not wrong about that, but they've been surpassed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They've been surpassed because, you know, right now, like I said, there's not a better top of the roster than what WWE has right now. It's just, it is just not, it's just not like the, you know, again, Rhea Ripley, you know what I mean? Like they just, they got so many people right, right, right now, but impact still has some great talent where they need to just make it about the matches again. You know what I mean? Make it about the matches again. Like, I'm not saying get away from doing the story stuff, but give us some banger ass matches. Like we got from, you know, from Deanna and Mickey at uh bound for glory like give us more of that um and so i'd love to see taya come back and be a part of that i will say though that this current knockouts division is the best they've had in a really long time and i just said prior like a week prior to slammiversary i said this is the worst knockouts division they've had in a while and fast forward six months they've grown it in considerably in size they've grown it in talent they've you know, even a little bit with star power, adding the inspiration. Um, it, it's, it's a pretty good, div- <coughs> excuse me. It's a pretty good division right now, but yeah. Knockouts knockdown was a really good show. Like mo- more of that, of just like, you know, what do what do we always say that they'd rather remind you they had AJ styles and find the next AJ styles. They're very similar like that with the knockouts where they, they would, they want to remind you, especially Gail Kim, will remind you, hey, we, you know, the knockouts, we originated this and this, but then they don't necessarily show us that on TV outside of whoever the knockouts champion is and, and 
who they're taking on. Because usually those matches are, are, are pretty good. But, you know, I do think it's the most talented division they've had in a, a really long time. And they're, you know, even bringing in young talent. Like, uh, let me ask you this question before you re- review Impact. I see this on social media almost daily where people are saying the knockouts need their own show or that impact needs a secondary show, but it, but it should be a knockouts show. What do you think about that concept, that thought? I'll I'll just say, first of all, I wouldn't do that. I mean, if you wanted to make a YouTube show, I mean, I guess that would be fine, but you know, I don't want to see another impact show until the current one is, is they've fixed everything that I'm, I'm speaking for myself as a fan until they fix all the things that bother me about the current show. I don't want to see a second one. You know, there, there's too many, there's too many short, uh, in my opinion, shortcuts that they take to where the show just doesn't look or sound good. You know, when that, when it comes across as I feel is like really professional again, then I'd be like, okay, well maybe, maybe you can do some extra programming, but, I I just I have no interest in it at the moment, but do you think that would ever be a good idea, like a knockout show? Um, it could be. Um, it, it it could be, but you know, wrestling shows are much better in a one hour format. Yeah, oh than yeah, they are in a two hour format. So it has to be a one hour show. Um, and it it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, but you'd be forcing them to pull double duty because you need the knockouts on the weekly impact show. You need that. Yeah. Um, so whatever they do on the other show would be in addition to what you're asking them to do for your weekly episodes of impact. Um, I, I'm not opposed to it. You know what I mean? Like more camera time for Tasha Stills, never a bad thing. Okay. More ca- camera time for Tasha Stills, not a bad thing. Um, you know, uh, the inspiration, you know, like, you know, their act is fun. Um, you know, like uh, the, the, the artist formerly known as Susie, Sue Young, uh, d- 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 Susan, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure you can always give her something else to do, and I'm sure she would knock it out of the park like she does with everything. Um, you know, Decay, like, you know, they, they got, they have a cast of characters where if they had, you know, writers dedicated to giving them a one-hour show every week, I think it could be good. Now, is that something that they need? I don't. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say they need that. But it could, it'd be a nice thing for content. You know what I mean? It'd be a nice thing for content. I wouldn't be opposed to it. I would certainly check it out. The reason I don't think they'll ever do anything like that is because they have so many people who are on, like, pay-per-appearance deals. Like, if you're just like, hey, we're going to do another show, now, as you kind of said, double duty, but now you're you're paying the women, like, okay, we're paying you one more date a month. But, uh, but do they have the revenue to, to cover that? You know what I mean? Like, even if it was on Access TV as another show, I mean, is that really bringing in, uh, you know, it's not going to bring in any extra revenue. If it was a YouTube show and it wasn't a premium show, just on their YouTube channel, yes, I would say, okay, they, the YouTube money could probably cover what they pay the women. So I just don't really see it. Um, there, was, there was one bit of news that I actually completely forgot about was where Anthem – recently purchased some small studio uh, TV studio company or something or other. I don't have the exact details because I don't care. Uh, a lot of people do care because they think it has some kind of effect on the impact wrestling product. And it's, it doesn't, you know, Anthem is going to, going to make uh, business moves and business ventures. And we don't have to tie all them. Well, maybe this is how it's going to help impact. Remember when people said thought Steve Harvey was going to show up on impact because he, <laughs> doing so, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, and you know, I even see some people like, oh, well, now that they've purchased a studio, maybe they'll up the production quality. Like, if they were going to up the production quality, if they had the money to buy a company, they have the money to to up the television product. Um, right, right. But my personal opinion is that I don't think the powers that be at Impact see a return on investment in that, and that's why I'm saying they're not going to do another TV show. Because they don't see, it, they won't see a return invest, of investment on it. I don't think they see that. And okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna you know improve the lighting and the and the cameras and this and this. I just don't think that they do. Now, granted, yes, I've said they they switch up some camera, camera angles. The backstage segments were are way better all of a sudden. You know, with the with the set of taping. So 
they're, I'm not saying they're completely ignoring these things because there is improvement, but I don't think the powers that be are like, I think there's, there's very, there's similarities to Sinclair broadcasting here. They're like, we're going to produce the show for as cheap as possible. You know, I, I don't think, yeah, yeah, we got the money to upgrade this and this, but if it's not, um, you know, bringing in ad added revenue, it's not worth our time. That's kind of the way I see it. Like there's some companies like Jeannie butts with women in the wrestling. Like she, she's not profiting off that company. You know what I mean? Like she, she'll put money into it. So it looks and sounds good. And it has, you know, they bring in some pretty good talent for the show. It's, that show is not for everybody. It's a little cheesy, but uh, they're, they're, you know, there's certain people in this world big, you know, this is a passion project. I'm okay. Losing a little, but just put on a good show. Mm -hmm. Anthem doesn't strike me as that. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, listen, the idea of a, of a knockout, um, of a knockout show, like I said, I think it, it could be good. It could be good if you, if, you, if you time it right, if you put it in the, you know, on, on the right platform. Again, even, like you said, even if it's something that just comes on YouTube, like, I think I'd check it out. I think I'd check it out, um, you know, promote it heavily um, and give it a chance to succeed. I'd be down for it. I'm not saying it's something that they need. Um, do they have necessarily the resources to pull it off right now? Again, I think when we talk about a one hour show, like, you know, what are we talking about? Two or three matches and some backstage skits, you know, like you, you can do that. That's, that's content that can be done. It's doable. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, but, but, and it, you know, it wouldn't be, it, it wouldn't, the more I'm thinking about this, this would not be a bad idea, but um, would they do it right? Like, would you trust them to do it right? I think that's the 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 real question. Right. Um, I think it would find its audience if you give it enough time. Um, and I think it would also it would give people a chance to, you know, again, get to know more, more people. But again, like they're the, the, the weekly episodes of impact still feel like they're missing so much that you got to get that right before you, like you said, add more content. Yeah. You haven't perfected this piece of content. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of this piece of content, this week's episode of impact on wrestling was a fun one. I enjoyed this week of, uh, this week's episode of impact. What, you know, before we dive into the episode, like, did you have any, any, any big takeaways from, from the show? I thought it was good too. I, I thought the, um, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more. I, th but it, I, the, the whole decay and demon thing was like out of place to me. I thought decay came off pretty bad this episode and I, I will, I'll break down why I, I, I think that, but other than that, I enjoyed the episode. Um, Stryker's commentary for the second week in a row was horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, my God, talk about a complete lack of enthusiasm for the product. <laughs> you know, dude, there was, I'll, I'll get to a couple <laughs> certain things later that I was just like, this guy is like falling asleep on the microphone. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, two weeks in a two weeks in a row, it sounds like he's just falling asleep, and Delo's doing everything he can to energize it. <laughs> it's just, right. I'm like, yo, I actually watched Lucha Underground this week out of, I had some time before I had to cook dinner, and I was listening to him. I was like, dude, he's two different people. Yeah, for sure. Um, but no, you know, the, um, some good backstage stuff. Uh, Scott Demore can, continues to be in too much, in my opinion. Like, there, there's segments that he walks in that he doesn't need to be involved. It's yeah. completely mm -hmm. unnecessary for him to walk in. And it's yeah. almost like, well, I got to have my spot on the show. Right. So, you know. Um, but no, it, it was it was fun overall. It was good. It was solid, and and the viewership was up considerably, 129k, I think it was. Uh, right. Which, by the way, I don't think that the viewership numbers are a reflection of the episode. I think the viewership numbers are a reflection of, if anything, people's excitement coming out of last week's episode. But oh, actually, actually, that's not true. And we give Impact crap for not advertising stuff enough. They did let it be known that the main event was going to be happening. They were advertised the Suzuki match and that could be the reason for the bump this week. So we'll see how it is next week. And if it's back down, then I think we'll have our answer. Yeah. To me, the episodes that do really poorly, in my opinion, 
are the ones that I always say to myself, I don't know what's on this show. You know, like sometimes I, I know, absolutely know what the main event is and this and this. And then there's some where I'm like, I'm watching this show and it's a complete surprise to me. Every, yeah. Everything on the card. So there was a little oh, yeah, bit of, yeah. of that this episode. but All right. So uh, on BTI, Brian Myers defeated Sam Bill. Uh, I thought Sam Bill would get a little come up as there. But after the match, Brian Myers crossed the line and delivered a sickening steel chair assault to Sam Bill. By the way, Brian Myers was scheduled for a match at Turning Point coming up, but he actually is injured, injured and will not be going against Rich Swan at Turning Point. Um, have you heard anything about this Brian Myers injury? No, I had ab- absolutely no clue about it, actually. Yeah. Um, All right. So let's see. We had Steve Macklin, your boy, versus the Raiders. <laughs> and if Macklin wins, he's added to the X Division Championship. What do you think happened here? Everyone knew, and I mean, you could see this coming from a mile away, what was going to happen. Of course, um, Steve Macklin won. And now the X Division uh, championship match at Turning Point is going to be a three-way between the champion Trey Miguel defending against uh, Steve Macklin and Laredo Kid. Because why would you have an X Division match with less than three people? I right. Right. Especially where one of them is a rightful number one contender because he won a multi-person match. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. What? Why become the number one contender if just like, hey, the the second place guy is also going to join in? Right. I mean, and then it doesn't make sense storyline wise when Steve Macklin was like, you know, no one's ever beat me, so put me in this match that I still don't have to lose. Right. Be the one that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he should want a one on one match. He should be like, give me the 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 next person. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But you know, this actually kind of tells me though know, they they are still protecting him he's not going to win this match uh but he's being protected and uh, that that could be leading to him actually eventually winning it yeah it's very possible and but we knew we were he was going to win because he just cut this whole promo last time no one's beat me he wasn't going to show up this week and lose a match after that to laredo kid you right. know that that absolutely wasn't going to happen uh and when i talk about mass striker falling asleep on commentary the match is almost over, and he goes, uh, well, you know, the, the winner of Trey Miguel and Laredo Kidd at Turning Point is going to have to deal with Steve Macklin. And, and <laughs> Hilo was like, well, if he wins this match, he's going to be in the you, – you know what I mean? Like, if he wins, he's going to be in the match. And then Stryker had absolutely no rebuttal, no comment, no nothing <laughs> like that. I mean, just completely, like, you know um, – yeah, I wrote that. He said the winner will have to contend with Macklin. I'm like, why do we have this match right now then, dude? Like, what do you – Right. So, I, I think Steve Macklin's doing a good job of, of creating his own brand of X Division style right. wrestling. You know, that, so that's what I'm enjoying from him right now. It's not just – you know, we think X Division, it's there's flips and there's dives and there's, you know, think this and this. He's, he's doing his own style of it, his own brand to where, like, it works. You know what I mean? He's, like, not an X Division guy, but – but it really works. Uh, Laredo Kid couldn't be colder at this moment. Um, you know, number one contender. He's in this title match. He's uh, has absolutely no momentum. They don't do good with mass wrestlers. They don't do good with these uh, lucha lucha libre guys. You know, they just they just don't. And you know, he's he's a good talent. Though. This is the second time they've they've brought no third time. He's actually. Uh, to been on and he's just a, he's just a mass wrestler out there you know what i mean like yeah. just, they just don't do a very good job of um making him a big deal but he, he has absolutely no momentum yeah, whatsoever yeah. right now and uh i'm just laredo kid and Terey miguel were perfectly capable of putting on a good match mm-hmm. and they just didn't want to do it so um you know i guess they know better than us but um Trey Miguel does a promo after this where he makes the promo all about Steve Macklin. Like, there's – Laredo Kid is just the third wheel in this thing. That, <laughs> hey, we need some dudes to do some flips um, and so we can do some spots. And that, that's all, you know, right. all it sounds like. But, but it was a good match. he's also there to take the pin. He's definitely yeah. there to take the pin. That's all it is. That's all back it is. to the, uh, the real match they wanted to. <laughs> yeah. So just have him do a one-on-one match and take the pin there. Like, 
you know, Laredo Kid cuts no promos or nothing like that. So, I mean, he, he's just ice cold. Ice cold. <laughs> uh, all right. So, let's see. Like you said, back backstage, we got the promo from Trey Miguel. Just tell him Steve Macklin that he really is going to beat him. All right. Uh, and then Chris Saban. Uh, so Ace Austin has been doing this thing where he's been going around wearing an I Beat Chris Saban t-shirt. And I love this. It reminds me of Chris Jericho when he was antagonizing Goldberg, saying that he had beaten Goldberg, which was obviously leading to a Chris Jericho-Goldberg match, which never actually happened because WCW uh, is was WCW. And um, But in this case, I love the idea of the bad guy continuously antagonizing the good guy that he beat him when he really didn't, and this will lead to a match, which, by the way, Ace Austin should win because he just needs some wins right now. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I like it. I'm a big fan of this. Chris Saban obviously challenges Ace Austin uh, to a match, and Ace Austin basically tells him that he doesn't have to do it. Um, But then he changes his mind and decides that they want to fight. And they start to brawl backstage, and you know nothing really comes of it. Just a little bit of uh, a little bit of slap fighting. Uh, what'd you think about this little interaction between Ace Austin and Chris Saban? It was cool. The shirt was funny. Ace Ace has a history of the funny shirts. I banged your wife and all that stuff. Um, Ace has to win this match. He has to win whatever feud they're doing here. He has to, has to, has to, has to, uh, because if he doesn't, what the hell do you do with him? I mean, you, you, you have to. So uh, I fully expect for him to. This will be a good match. It, it'll be it, – it's – he's one of the, like, pillars of this company, in my opinion. But we, we really – I feel like week to week we forget he's a part of the company. Like, he's just not doing anything exciting. Uh, when, he, when he had his first X Division championship run, I thought he should have had that title for a long time. I thought they should have kept getting creative – you know, they had the story with Alicia, with Trey's mom. I felt they needed to find ways to keep that going. Um, granted, it was going to take being more creative with your storylines, but how can he just continue to be sleazy and bring in other females into the picture? Like, they had to keep that going. But the minute he drops the title, like, unnecessarily to Willie Mack in front of in an empty arena, it was like he just became a wrestler, another wrestler, so... Totally agree. Jesus All right, man. so we had the Knockouts World Tag Team Champions, the Inspira- go Inspira- the Inspiration going right. against uh, the Undead Bridesmaids, Kimberly and Brandy Lauren. And listen, I, I got to say, this Undead Bridesmaids act for uh, Kimberly and Brandy Lauren, it's not working. It's not working. Um, they're, they're, I feel like they're taking the good thing that Stu Young has built up and they're really just making it jobber material. Um, it's just, it's not working. I, you know, I don't know. Um, again, I think Kimberly can wrestle, let her do some matches. You know, I don't know what Brandy Lauren can do, but let her do some stuff, you know, like, but, but, but but, right. Be hot. But, um, (laughs) but like, you know, why not, man? Why, why not? Like, I I just, I, I don't know. This is the way to go. It's not entertaining. They don't really, um, come off as like scary zombies. So, I think they need to, to to find another direction for these two because they just got squashed by the inspiration. Okay, that's <laughs> just tell you everything you need to know about this gimmick. And, and they got a jobber entrance. And how the fans see it. Yes, and they got a jobber entrance. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean the the fans were cheering for the inspiration, and then I felt I felt so insulted. Like my intelligence was so insulted when when uh, strikers like. Yes, D'Lo. Now, is the audience mocking the inspiration? And D'Lo's like, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think they could be like, what? They're trying to... They're just doing some fake wrestling, like uh, trying to convince us, oh, they're, they're cheering for the inspiration, but they don't really mean it. It's like the time Kurt Angle, because I was a baby face, and they kept telling him, you suck. Yeah, and he, yeah, goes, yeah. he cut this promo saying... They're not talking to me. They're talking to my opponent. So then for like for a few weeks, Angle used to come down and chant, you suck also, but pointed his opponent in the ring, and they were trying to change the narrative, and everyone's like, dude, come on, man. Um, right. But I, but I will say this match was actually better than I expected it to be, uh, and I thought Brandy Loren looked 
she wrestled better in this match than she had in her previous couple. Like she looked, did not look good in them. I should never say Brandy Loren does not look good. That's not what I meant. Uh, but the wrestling was not, not the best, her, her last few matches. But I actually thought they did good here. I thought they were more committed to the gimmick this time around. I bought it a little more than I normally do. But they're, they need Sue Young. Like, I, I guess she's hurt. They, like, really, really badly need her yeah. to be a part of this so that, so that they can be more accessories and in the background. And, um, you know, they don't have to try so hard. Because, like, Sue Young lives the gimmick. Like, that is her. You, yeah. When you see her come out, we know what she looks like now without makeup with Susan and Susie and everything. But we don't see those characters when we see Sue Young come out because she's so just committed to this. It's like right. she lives it to where these other two girls are just wearing makeup. Um, but I thought this week they were more committed to it than what they've shown us in the past. Like they, I just, I just thought um, it looks better, but the match overall was better than I expected. The inspiration is like very, very over, but they're, I guess they're supposed to be heels, but it's going to be probably hard to keep them that way. Cause the, the um, impact faithful, which is now a thing, um, really, really cheers for them. I got to say this Impact Faithful. They're trying to make this the WWE Universe thing. I'm going to tell you why I don't like it. Usually when you say that an audience is faithful, you're, ref you're, ref I mean, it makes sense, but that's what you call like very tiny fan bases. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, okay. Well? So I'm a Chargers fan, smallest fan base in the NFL. So right, it's like right. the Charger faithful, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, those yeah. guys are just still hanging in there. Um, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. So I, that's why I don't really like it because it insinuates like WWE Universe is like what's bigger than the universe, you know what I mean? Like that, that's right. the picture they're painting. Impact is trying to do – they're trying to brand their fan base. Like, do not call me the fucking Impact faithful, dude. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> me personally. Do not call me that because that is like right. – uh, that just like insinuates I live in the basement. Uh, all I do is watch wrestling. Um, I'm in the basement right now. Okay. Yeah, Change I don't me. leave the basement. I just like ma the meatloaf. Have her <laughs> come and bring in food down to me and um, don't call me the fucking impact faithful dude. Like, um, but anyway, I thought that the. What do you think about the uh, after the match shenanigans with the uh, I was gonna the gay basin came around and surrounded them and the inspiration just was like terrified of decay. Uh, that's what, what, that's what I was gonna get at. First of all, the, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not feeling good, so I'm sorry for the coughing, folks. But um, first of all, the end of the match, decay, not decay, but inspiration is hitting their finish, and Matt Stryker is just fucking babbling through it, dude. Like not calling the move, nothing. Like that's why I'm like, what is this guy doing? And he's oh tag team maneuver like after after it's already hit and they're in the middle of a pin then he then he decides to call the move but he's fucking babbling about shit I, it's really weird but anyway the after the match decay thing I thought was really really cool uh, of course the lights went out and D'Lo was very shocked uh, what, what the hell could this be <laughs> but I th I thought it came off cool inspiration looked good and it looked scared and it didn't come off like cheesy or nothing like that. They didn't turn the lights back on and sh you know, they just kind of left it out and then they went over to whatever segment. So it all came off really, really good, but they, I felt that the rest of the episode undid what they did with decay. When I said, I said earlier, decay didn't come off good this episode. They didn't look good. They're starting to, to tie them into comedy um, mm -hmm. instead of being, you know, like if you look at Abaddon in AEW, not granted, she wrestles once every blue moon, but she's very similar to Sue Young, where just like she lives the gimmick, and they don't make her do something that's out of her, out of character. They don't make her talk. They tried to interview her the other day, and she just spilled a bunch of blood out of her mouth, and <laughs> they just didn't go back to her. <laughs> um, that was that was uh, before uh, rest before wrestling Brit on Halloween, so. You do this really cool segment, and then you transition to that that into uh, Rosemary and Havoc talking to Johnny Bravo about virgin blood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then you have Decay wrestling later in a show in a comedy mm. match. Like I, I feel like they had something cool and spooky going, and then they 
and then they made him human again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, all right. So backstage, we got an interview with Chelsea Green talking about her upcoming match with Jordan Grace for the Digital Media Championship, which will be on Turning Point. Um, then we get the Moose. The first Digital Media cha- match I ever watch. Oh, yeah. I watched one. It was pretty good. It was nice to be consumable, I got to say. Okay. Um, so we got Moose blindsiding Eddie Edwards during an interview with Gia Miller, and a brawl, of course, breaks out. They fight out to the ring where Moose power bombs Eddie Edwards on the apron. It's the hardest part of the ring. I don't know if you've heard that before. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's see, Eddie gains momentum with a series of ch- uh, chair shots, followed by a double underhook power bomb. Eddie places Moose on the table and climbs to the top of the ladder, but Moose retreats just in time. On the other side of the curtain, Scott Demore tells Moose that his Impact World Title match against Eddie Edwards at Turning Point will now be a full medal mayhem. What do you think about this? So, first of all, the Chelsea Green thing, I felt that it's they're they're planting the seeds for her and Cardona. It's not obvious, but I feel like they're planting the seeds for for both of them to turn heel here very soon. I'd love that. Yeah, I thought so he did a really good job with um, GCW or whatever it was when he had the title, and everybody obviously hated him for that. Um, and I thought he did a good job healing on everybody. So that could be a nice little untapped uh, side of Matt Cardona. That could be, you know, a fresh, a fresh breath of a uh, character for Impact TV. Yeah. So I, I, that's where I think it's going. I, I, I truly do. Yeah. Um, the Moose and Eddie stuff, dude. Like, I've been I've been saying this for a few weeks now, dude. That the interview and then that someone gets attacked. I mean, it's just so been here, been there, done that. It's played out. Um, but the brawl was kind of cool in the ring. But I sound like Jim Cornette here, where I'm like, okay, there's a brawl going on in the ring. Nobody is trying to break it up. There's no referees coming out. There's security. No nothing. They're just letting these guys, uh, you know, Moose, trying to kill Eddie Edwards they're just like letting it happen right and uh then then Stryker and Dilo were just calling it calling it like it's a match like oh what's he gonna do here here comes and and like I it just didn't seem like they were like legit yo someone someone get some help out here get you know something nothing nothing like that they're calling it like it's an actual match calling the moves and then he does um the thing where he puts the chair around his Eddie's yep. neck, and Striker's just like, as as monotone as you can be, he just broke Eddie Edwards' neck. <laughs> as monotone oh, and half asleep as you could possibly be. No, nothing, dude. And D'Lo's trying his damnedest to, to bring some energy to it. Right. <laughs> he just broke Eddie Edwards' neck, which he clearly didn't. Because <laughs> he got up and started fighting right after that. So, I don't know, um... I'm just not a big like brawl guy, but it was yeah, it, did a good it job. has to have meaning or be really outlandish in order to stand out. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, all right, so we got Doc Gallows versus Hikaleo. Um, Doc Gallows ended up getting the win here. Um, it was a it was a power bomb was the finish. Uh, he got a power bomb on Hikaleo to you know get that win. All right, backstage we got. Mean Gia Miller conducting the interview with former Knockouts champion Deanna Perrazzo. This is the first time anyone has seen the Virtuosa since losing the title to Mickey James at Bound for Glory. Perrazzo is not receptive of any of Gia's questions and states that the only reason she's present for the interview is because she's contractually obligated. After refusing to provide any additional information, Perrazzo says that the world will just have to wait and see what her next move is. That's curious. That's very curious. All yeah. right. Scott Demore gives Finjuice an opportunity to get back on track and puts them in a match against the K uh, at turning point. Then Eric Young says that his issues with Rhino will be over forever when Violent by Design battle Rhino and Heath at turning point. So a lot of, you know, prepping the turning point card going on here. Um, so then we had a match coming up. We had Johnny Swinger, Hernandez, and Fala Bob versus the Demon and Decay. And uh, the Demon defeated Swinger with a submission uh, to get the victory for his team. All right. Um, 
Decay offered to help Johnny Bravo to make Johnny Swinger happy in exchange for his virgin blood. Uh, the digital media champion, Jordan Grace, claimed that Chelsea Green won't be able to get the job done when they battle for the digital media championship at Turning Point. Uh, Knockouts champion Mickey James said that she should have known better after Mercedes Martinez attacked her from behind last week. All uh, right. All right. There's a lot going on there. But, but so little at the same time. That's why you didn't ask me my opinion on everything, anything. It's like, let's just right. move on. Right, um, right, right. Does Mickey James say hardcore country too, too much, dude? Like, I feel like it's uh, – I'm going like to say no. Real- I'm going to say no, she doesn't. I'm going to say no, she doesn't because I, I, I mentioned this when she first introduced the hardcore country thing in the buildup with Deanna Perrazzo to Bound for Glory. She was very uh, strategic in emphasizing that this is why – she is different than she was before. No, and I true. think that's actually smart. And it's a, it's a good thing to do because um, it's so easy for people to be like, well, you know, we've seen you X, Y, Z. You know what I mean? And like, it was important for her to introduce that this is why, you know, uh, you know, Deanna might've made this personal and now she's out for a vengeance and you're not going to be dealing with the same person you were messing with before. You're messing with this version of me. And so I thought that was actually, um, you know, a, a really good use of, you know, letting everybody know this is your alter ego and I might do some things that are seem out of character. I might say some things that seem out of character, but I'm still here in, you know, the, the form that you know and love. All right. I can dig it. I can totally dig that. Um, to rewind a little, I thought Deanna Prazo's segment was excellent. And this is one good thing that, I mean, they do lots of good things, but one of the things Impact's excellent at is when their champion loses, they keep them off TV for a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, back when I watched a lot of WWE, like clockwork, the champion would drop the title at the pay-per-view and they would kick off the next show standing in the ring with a fucking microphone and I want my rematch, you know, let's do it in this very ring tonight. Um, and I always feel like you, it's good to keep the, t- you know, like when Rich Swan lost to Kenny Omega, he wasn't on the fucking next show. You know, they, they kept right. them off for several weeks because you want to wonder what is, how is the champion handling this loss of this title that they had for a while? And, and I always feel like when a champion loses the title, that's when you got to redirect their gimmick just a little bit. You know, she yeah. can't come out as the same braggadocious virtuosa. So, you know, they're, they're changing her up a little bit. They do a pretty good job with that, um, I, I will say. It, it's very rare that the champion just comes out and, you know, starts cutting promos and everything immediately the next week. Uh, right. The time where it could have worked was when Josh Alexander, when Moose took him out, like he should have come out the next episode, very first thing, and, you know, pushed all the security guys out of the way and got in the middle of the ring and mm-hmm. started yelling right away. I mean, like something like that should have happened. Um, and then what was the uh, – the Finju segment, dude, that, that was what I was saying with Scott Demore. Like, no reason for him to be in that. None right. whatsoever. And it's just like, let's get Scott on, on, on screen some more. Just silly, yeah. ridiculous. Um, so this uh, brings us up to our main event. Um, Josh Alexander versus Minoru Suzuki. And I have to say, I was really impressed by this. I'm not somebody who's all about wrestling for the sake of wrestling. Um, like, I love to have a good story, but damn it, they told the story in the ring. And it, it was nice and slow. It was nice and, 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 and effectively, efficiently laid in, you know, all the chops and everything like that. And by the time they got to the end, I was hooked. That was an excellent main event, in my opinion. If you guys have not seen Minoru Suzuki versus Josh Alexander, go check that out. It is worth the price of admission alone. Yeah, it... um. For me, it started off slow. I'm not a big fan of the chops and the the slaps and the back and forth. Like I've, you know, the, the the forearms. I don't like that. I don't like any match that does that. So it just for me, it started off really slow. And there was already points in the show where that I thought were slow. Like when when Luke Gallows came out, like their music is so slow and they walk slow and the commentaries talk commentaries even talk slow i thought like 45 minutes had passed by the time luke gallows finally got to the ring and the match started (laughs) 
But there was a couple instances that I just felt like it was like dragging a little bit. So I was already kind of just conditioned to be annoyed by that. So the match for me at first, I was just like, oh my God, let's, let's get to it, you know? Um, but they, they really delivered a, a good match. They're talking all over Minoru Suzuki's entrance, which I, <laughs> I'm supposed to just let that bubble and let it happen. That's part of the gimmick, but they fucking just talking and talking, talking over it. But Really good match. Uh, Josh Alexander needed a win like this. You know, he absolutely did. And uh, it was good. It was just a good, like, wrestling main event. There's no comedy, no nothing. You know, they didn't overthink the story or the storyline or anything. They just, they just gave us, like, a, a good match. You know, that meant something because Josh needed uh, a big win like that. I thought he hit the C4 spike out of nowhere. Um and then that was another thing. <laughs> back to back to Stryker. Um, he hits a C4 spike. He's just like, the C4 spike. And then he's in the middle of pinning him. And he goes very calm. He goes, he's going to do it. <laughs> like he's going to beat him. Oh, no energy okay. at all. At all. So, oh my God. It was God. a little nice on the last cover. Uh, I agree. God, he's gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> but no, really, really excellent main event. Yeah. No, I mean, this, I, I enjoyed this main event a lot, man. If you're anybody out there who hasn't seen this episode, go out of your way to find this main event. It was excellent. Um, they did a great job setting up turning point on this show. Um, and so, what are you looking forward to with Impact coming up in the next few weeks, months here? So I'm actually looking forward to Turning Point because it's a live event. I have to believe because they completely dropped the ball bound for glory on uh surprises. Right. And uh, on, I guess on BTI, you know, the ice man was like, Oh, you know, maybe there's going to be a debut. I tell people don't listen to him. Just <laughs> this dude's already led us astray before. Right. But with that being said, you kind of feel like they have to do something like they just have to, they, you completely dropped the – I'm not saying they dropped the ball bound for glory, but you built up something that didn't happen. Right. So you have to – there has to be a talking point coming out of turning point. Like, they can't just yeah. be like, hey, that was a really good live pay-per-view of matches. Like you Call it talking point. Yeah. Talk- <laughs> now, you can't just be like, hey, yeah, talk. here's, here's, a, here's <laughs> a good pay-per-view. Like, you have – there has to be a talking point out of this show. Right. Um, so I'm looking forward to – I like Full Metal Mayhem matches. When Scott Nemore came out, I was positive this motherfucker was going to say it was a street fight or a no DQ. I was positive, dude. I was already with my notes ready to, like, fuck this motherfucker. <laughs> so, um, a monster's ball! Yeah, dude. Oh, my God. I was positive that's what he was going to do. I've always liked Full Metal Mayhem. That's very few and far between. Um, it's still a hardcore match. Don't get me wrong, but, I mean, there's... It's a little different, so I've I've tend I've tend to enjoy them. I want to go back to Josh Alexander here because there was a point I wanted to to make. I was thinking this when they're going off the air and they're showing his wife. Um, what I think would be very very effective, and will play into Josh Alexander like being emotional and everything. Mm-hmm. Do you remember years ago when uh, Davy Richards turned on Eddie Edwards mm-hmm. and? Uh, Alicia was in the crowd with Angelina Love and then she just turns and clocks her out of nowhere yeah. and that just all of a sudden is like whoa what the hell happened yep. I think because Jay Chunk and wrestle so I really think that they should um, do something very very similar to like uh, Moose is good by himself but if he was mm-hmm. to introduce a female on his end um, who would just kind of randomly take Josh Alexander's wife out I think it could be very, very effective for the story. Yeah. So I don't know. That is, that is. On screen, you know, um, I've always thought she should be, uh, they should add her to the division. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, I guess yeah. I just like Asians, but um, my fiance's mm-hmm. Asian. Let me just throw that out there. <laughs> That's why I made that comment, folks. But um, what are you trying to say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can't just, I just randomly be like, I like Asians. Um, <laughs> But yeah, dude, I, I'm I'm looking forward to it because I think being a live show that there has to be a reason it's live. Uh-huh. You know, 
I think it can be a very like pay-per-view quality show. I'm disappointed we're not going to get Rich Swan and Brian Myers on it because that's two of my favorites. You know, I'm disappointed that's not going to happen. But you know, yeah, well, they haven't seemed to uh, announce any comedy matches or anything like that. Anything silly? Like they all seem like they're like it's a good card. Uh, is this Bullet Club match with with uh, Luke? Luke uh, Ga- is that match on it? The tag team title match? I don't even know. Maybe, oh. maybe. Yeah, I, I honestly like. <sighs> I just want to get in with when it comes to some of that stuff. Like, it's like you're kind of doing it, but you're kind of not. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. With it. I just want that match to be over with. Yeah. I want the Bullet Club to win the titles like they should have. And then I don't know what the hell you do with this tag team division, but it is so boring. Right. Hor- horribly boring. So, why did, they tell- why did they show fucking Rhino and Heath-, Heath versus Reno Scum, like randomly in a empty arena I man no i understand you're trying to it's it's rhino it's what you know there's a storyline that no one really cares about that much that we have to throw back an old match in <laughs> it, you know but i was just like what in the hell um so yeah the, no but turning point should be good uh we're not going to review it folks because by the time you hear this show turning point just going to be in a few hours anyway right. Uh, worst case scenario, this show comes out Sunday and Turning Point's already happened, so we're not going to do that. But um, should be good, should be fun. Hell yeah. So, yeah, guys, I think that's going to that's gonna kind of wrap it for us this week. As always, leave your comments and questions in the comment section of the YouTube video below or send them to me at TW Talk About on Twitter um, or send them to BQ. BQ, tell the people where they can find you. How about you just don't find me this week? Just leave me alone. <laughs> no, I- <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, so BQ speaks on Twitter, uh, Impact Lounge on Twitter, Impact Lounge on Instagram, Impact Lounge on Facebook, the Book of Faces. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So um, enjoy Impact this week. Like I said, you know, shoot us some DMs, shoot us some tweets. You know, tweet me, I tweet back, and um, yeah, bring more people to the conversation. So uh, we're enjoying Impact right now. We hope you are too. For BQ, I'm TW. Peace out.